Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. It's time to clear out some tennis nerd terminology, some lingo that I use in many of my videos that might be confusing. If you have other ideas of lingo that I should clear up, that I should describe, let me know in the comments below and I deal with this in an upcoming video. But let's start. This is all on tennisnerd.net. I'll throw in some extra ones as well that I forgot about. Uh, go to tennisnerd.net every day and check out content please thank you very much uh, launch angle first one the way the ball shoots off the racket what's the launch angle is it low is it high do you get more height over the net or you get a lower launch angle meaning that the ball launches lower over the net if you have a tighter string pattern tighter string bed like a smaller head size 18 20 you're gonna have a lower trajectory lower launch angle or if you have kind of an open pattern 16 19 hundred square inch racket you can have a higher trajectory over the net. Some people prefer to get a little bit more help with the height over the net or they maybe naturally use more topspin in their game while some control players maybe with old school flatter strokes might like a lower trajectory. The launch angle what you prefer but that's what I try to describe in my videos uh, of each racket that I review. Uh, plow through pretty self-explanatory when something plows through the ball it means it has some mass behind it it's pretty solid stable uh, of usually has a higher swing weight we'll get into that as well kind of plows through the ball like a snow plow like really going through the ball and you find that usually with heavier rackets overall uh, tweener racket something I've used and I misused in some of my videos we can quickly look at the tennis warehouse description which goes some years back about this category and they actually have three different categories they describe First is power or game improvement rackets. Those are 107 to 135 square inches, usually very lightweight, uh, kind of stiff generally, made for beginners to lower level intermediate players. Then we have tweener rackets, which uh, now should be changed a little bit. This is from 95 to 102 square inches, 9.5 to 11 ounces, low to medium, medium high power, and for intermediate to advanced players, I would say this category is more around 98 to 100 today and it's a, the biggest category of all. Uh, controller player rackets, they're less frequent today. The, back then they used to kind of denote them as used only for advanced players and between 85 to 98 square inches. Today most player rackets are around 95 to 98. They have thinner, more flexible beams and are balanced head light to retain maneuverability despite the high weight. So. Those were the categories. I think tweener can be a bit confusing and the, it's all pretty much changed with 98 to 100 being uh, the biggest category. And uh, I think we should stop using that. I will, I will do that. Let's talk about plushness. When a racket is plush, it's often connected to a lower stiffness rating, meaning it is softer on impact. It feels like a pillow a little bit. Typical for old school racket, 90 to 95 square inches. Not so common with today's bigger head sizes. Uh, with this kind of, of flexible nice plush feel some players love it some players hate it some people prefer like a board like feel like a stiff racket with a stiff string bed high tension so on i prefer a slightly plusher feel like a lower flex and so on springiness if the string bed of the racket is described as, as springy it means there's a lot of movement going on after your shot so uh, it's not the best thing for string life it might also be uh used in terms of like a lack of control so if something is springy it doesn't mean you have 100 percent control of what's happening there's some trampoline effect meaning the ball sinks in and shoots out and you're not sure exactly where it shoots out you see this in rackets like the clash let's talk about swing weight briefly i get a lot of questions what is swing weight in essence it's how heavy the racket feels to swing and it's measured in units kilogram centimeters squared it's a pretty technical term but ideally you should just think of it as how heavy the racket is to swing most swing weights today are lower than they used to be but most pro players still use heavier swing weights 350 to 360 uh, or even higher sometimes while most recreational players and recreational rackets are around 310 to 325 30 in swing weight that's kind of the higher range there are some advanced player frames like the new vcore pro 97h for example or the rf 97 that have swing weights in the 340 range that's pretty rare today uh, when a racket is described as solid stable pretty much self-explanatory as well it means it's very it has usually a lot of mass a sturdy feel where it's not gonna be easy to push it around even when your opponent hits a heavy ball at you 
Stiffness is measured in RA. It's sometimes looked at as the main culprit of tennis elbow. I don't think it should be overused uh, because uh, stiffness is just one of the measurements that you need to be aware of. There's also the layup, what's actually inside the racket, if there's any dampening material, what's the composition, is there like something like fiberglass, which is not so common these days, but used to create a softer feel. These are things you also need to look at. So stiffness doesn't give you the whole story, but a very stiff racket might lead to more vibrations and and later on a tennis elbow. So you have to be a bit careful, but it's not the, the whole story of it. Uh, most rackets back in the day used to be low stiffness, meaning below 60. Uh, most rackets today are mid 60, so they're a bit stiffer, I give you a little bit more power because they're generally lighter. So when a racket is lighter, you usually need to bump up the stiffness to give some kind of stability and power in the frame. Uh, stiffness ratings are usually given unstrung, uh, but when you add strings, they drop around three points. So a 70 stiffness rating is usually around 67 with strings. As you add strings to the racket, the racket becomes more flexible. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, sweet spot, and uh, that's the optimal area where you should hit the ball, meaning that the ball will give its optimal feel and power and you will have a good shot when you hit the sweet spot. Some sweet spots are described as massive as the gravity line was introduced as massive sweet spot dominates the game. Whether that was true or not, you can find some stat stats and measurements at the Tennis Warehouse University page where this, they have these heat maps that show the size of the sweet spot. I think sometimes a large sweet spot might not give you the kind of control you want and doesn't mean that you're going to hit it uh, over and over. Sometimes a smaller sweet spot gives you a little bit more confidence. It all depends on your style of play. So it's not all about the size of the sweet spot, but generally a bigger head size and more real estate in the head and the string bed will give you uh, a bigger sweet spot. Open string pattern. When a string pattern is described as open, it means the holes are wider, larger, and it means that they will create more movement. There will be more room for the strings to move. The drill pattern, how the grommets, how the string holes are drilled is more wide apart, giving you a more spin potential. It doesn't add the spin. You have to still hit the ball. Uh, that is what imparts the spin in the end. But the potential of more spin is there when you have a wider string span spacing. You, when you hit the ball and then they snap back into place. That's what you see with polyester strings and not with multifilament or gut strings. But an open string bed, you'll see that in a 100 square inch 1619 pattern, for example, where you find a tighter string bed in a 95 square inch 1820 pattern. Beam width, that is the thickness of the racket, the thickness of the beam. It might change, it might be one constant beam. Uh, it all depends on the design of the racket. Uh, a thinner beam is usually more flexible, gives it a little bit more maneuverability through the air, but less power, less stability. A thicker beam, you have that extra power, extra stiffness, extra stability. It really depends on what you like. Control frames usually have a thinner beam and uh, power frames usually have a thicker beam, like 26 millimeters, like the Pure Drive, for example, from Babola, while you see a typical prestige or like a blade they have 20 21 millimeter beams so that's what uh, is the beam with headlight balance or head heavy balance the racket has a balance point where is the balance point is it towards the handle meaning headlight so it's light in the head or is it towards the head meaning it's head heavy uh, most rackets are headlight. There were some rackets back in the day that were head heavy, like the Wilson Hammer series, for example, which was a great name because a hammer is very head heavy, has all the weight in the head. When you add weight in the head to a racket, it gets more power, higher swing weight, uh, but it might also be tougher to control and to swing. So a headlight racket has more maneuverability. Most rackets today are headlight, but lower, like three, four points. Back in the day, you'd find rackets that were heavy, static weight, maybe 350, 60 grams strong, but they had a really high headlight balance. One example is the 6195 from Wilson, that it has a lot of static weight, but compensates by being very headlight. So around 10 points headlight with strings. You can see a table on tennisner.net where you have all these measurements. For example, a racket that is 10 points headlight is around 31 centimeters in balance. This also depends if you have an extended racket where this will affect and change the, the ratings of the table. Twist weight, last but not least, it determines it technically how much force is required to twist the racket around the long axis of a racket. Uh, most 
oversized rackets have a high twist weight meaning they are tougher to rotate to twist let's say you have an off center shot it's less likely that the racket will twist when it has a high twist weight and uh, if some rackets that have a smaller head size needs more weight at positions like three and nine to increase the twist weight to not make them so prone to twisting so uh, that's where the twist weight comes in it's not as important as swing weight but good to be aware of I think that's pretty much it for this one. I hope I covered most of it. As I said, the layup is the composition of what's inside the racket, the dampening materials, uh, so on. And that's also a thing I talk about a lot in my videos. What other terms would you like me to describe? And are there terms I shouldn't use or should use more in my videos? Let me know. I try to make them as user-friendly as possible, but sometimes I get too nerdy and I might stray into the complicated. But Try my best to improve, improve, improve all the time, as we all should. Uh, okay, that's about it for this one. If you want to support me, join my Patreon page, patreon.com slash tennis nerd, or by buying something through my affiliates. The links are in the description, such as Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, Top Court, Swing Vision, all great products. Check them out in the description. Please also subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. That's it for now. Have a nice day, and don't forget to play some tennis.